Hey guys, this is John, and I'm playing Chess is Pay to Win in a three-minute game on chess.com. It's another using the clock as a weapon session. Let's play d6 on move two. I'm feeling some open Sicilian action. This is quite a high rating. Interesting username right there. I do disagree with this username. <laughs> okay, let's play classical Sicilian. Richter Rouser. I'll play a6, bishop d7. Maybe, just maybe, we will see a Kojol suicide variation. Okay, let's try it. B5, very ambitious move. Named after the Croatian Grandmaster, Zdenko Kozol. Some real sharp stuff possible here. Okay, King B1, let's play Queen B6. Pre-move this if White wants to trade. He's spending a bit of time here. This is a post-workout session, by the way, if you're curious. Okay, let's play queen c5. I went for a run outside, probably about three and a half miles. I had some, some tightness and pain in my left knee, so I stopped maybe two-thirds of the way through the run, just trying to be cautious. Uh, I've torn both my ACLs before, Once, one when I was 18 and the other when I was 23. I'm 32 now, so I always try to be careful with my knees. Okay, so queen c5. This is just a helpful move in a lot of variations. The queen can come to e5. I could have thought about playing b4 there, actually, and go after the e4 pawn. That would have been better in hindsight, but I still like my position here. I don't know why I didn't consider b4. Very strange on my part, but sometimes winning that pawn on e4 is not even best because it will open lines for white. So, all right, very odd that white is spending so much time here. This is the thing you really have to avoid in three minutes. Just this huge think on a move. Okay, bishop d3, that move looks fine. I'm um, thinking about h5 here. I'm again thinking about b4. I think I will play b4. I'm going to play b4 followed by e5. And just close up the center. And then look to play on the queen side, most likely. I'm going to bet that white plays this. Yeah, brings the knight around. Uh, usually h5 is a good idea if you can get that in. So stop knight h5, also prepare bishop h6. I do have a dark square bishop and my opponent does not. So playing on the dark squares is, is wise if I can do that. Um, let's play bishop h6. So yeah, this pawn will be under attack, but I think I'm just going to park the king here. Let's let white win this. I don't care if white wins this pawn because... That looks pretty darn dangerous leading towards their... Oh, don't don't pre-move that. <laughs> that looks pretty darn dangerous leading towards their king, and they are under a minute now. Okay, he takes, and let's just push the pawn. Looking for some breakthroughs. I'm thinking probably g4. I might maneuver my bishop like this. Don't put it past me to do that. This is a common maneuver, actually, in the Kojal suicide variation. Have that bishop help in attacking the white king. And in true Kojol suicide variation, I'm rolling fashion, I'm rolling with my king in the center. Let's take that. And let's continue pushing. Okay. Um, hmm. Let's take that. I'm going to keep pushing here. My king looks safe enough for the moment. I mean, it's pretty exposed, of course, but... Uh, okay, let's take. Yeah, I feel like white's going to have trouble with this pawn. Okay, I could take and then take b2 check. Uh, queen takes a3 is even possible. Queen takes a3 actually looks pretty nice here. But maybe rook d2 against that. Could just move my rook. Uh, so many options here. Let's just move the rook. Keep the tension. Okay, still queen takes a3. Looks even stronger now. Yeah. Let's do that. He has to reinforce b2. But even then... Yeah, this should be winning. As the bishop hangs at the end with check. Uh, let's go... Let's go here. Let's go check. Okay, looking for some sort of knockout, maybe here. And if he takes, I have mate on b2. 
So that should be sufficient. Check. Mm -hmm. And that is mate. Okay, fun game. Ended up getting through on the queen side, but yeah, how long was that think that white had in the opening? I mean, maybe he was over away from his keyboard doing something, but that was a minute long think, 130 your time in a no increment three minute game. Uh, just can't do that. Cannot do that. So, yeah, that said, I could have played b4 here and gone after the pawn. This might even be theory. I seem to remember something like this. Knight e2, take, and then take, and this knight can jump to, say, f4, for instance. And black's pawn structure and the shelter for their king in the center is, is a bit shaky. So, I like that game. Okay, so I had a real good session last time. Went 5 for 5, but we're wiping the, the slate clean. Let's continue getting after it here. Seeing if there's any other decisions worth uh, mentioning, but okay, we got another game here. Klimt Killer 1. I feel like I know Klimt Killer. Definitely seen this player around before. Okay, let's play C4. Queen's Indian defense, classical variation with a bishop on B7. Okay, this line I think is supposed to be a little dubious for black because of this idea. As I recall, let's go here. Okay, I'll just take this way. It's kind of a bad Benoni for black because the the bishop would not like to be here usually. Black's a little bit cramped. Black's not going to lose right away or anything, but it should be a nice edge for, uh, for white. Mm, okay, let's play bishop here. I feel like I already might have misplayed this a little bit. Let's play here. Expecting knight c5. Yeah, that's that's kind of annoying. e5 followed by d6 maybe? That's interesting. Uh, probably doesn't... Well, maybe. Maybe, maybe. I'm going to try it. I don't like the way that this game is going. I think I underestimated this knight jumping in here and here. But this is an interesting idea to try to seize back the initiative. Trend-breaking move, if you will. That's what Grandmaster Yermolinsky might call it in his book, Road to Chess Improvement. Okay, so I can take d6. I can push e6. Taking d6 would be the default decision here. I think I'm going to do that. Now, I'm envisioning my queen coming to d4 eventually. I mean, he could take on e1 here. I'll just bring with that capture. Okay, so he doesn't. So, okay. Hmm. Tricky business. Let's play... Let's play takes. He might still take here, I don't know. But at least I get the file if he does. He does take. Okay, now let's play just a temporizing move, queen e3. This knight is annoying, no doubt. But I do like that I have the file. Uh, maybe some ideas of knight f5 someday. That would be a nice knight to drop in the position if I ever could. Yeah, like now I could try queen g5 if I want to make that a reality. Let's do it. It's a pretty blatant threat, but it's going to force him to do something about it. Okay, so he drops back. Hmm. I'm going to play here, looking to go after this pawn. He has three attackers on this, and I only have two defenders, but I do have this queen d4 resource in a lot of positions, so I I think he's probably not going to take it, and I might be able to pick up this. b5 looks reasonable here, but make him think about it. He is going to take. Ooh, I feel like this should lose a piece somehow. Just take and then queen d4 check? Yeah, I think that just wins a piece. Check. If he had played it the other way, he would have knight f6 here. But c4 would still be loose. Yeah, he said oops in the chat. <laughs> That's a pretty clear sign that you messed up. When you say oops in the chat. Okay, but not going to relax. He does have a majority on the queen side, and my knight is kind of out of play. But yeah, it looks like after there's a trade of queens and... 
I'm attacking the rook and the c4 pawn. I should be able to convert this pretty cleanly. All right, so benefited from a blunder my, by my opponent there. Yeah, I think e5 was an important move. I mean, this is the type of move, I bet if you were to run this through the engine, it's probably going to say black's better after this, just gut feeling. But I didn't like the way that this game was trending, and the initiative is so important in blitz, especially no increment blitz. So knight c5, it just seemed like he had some nice possibilities, and the ultimate goal for white in these positions is to get an e5 oftentimes, you know, often with the help of, of f4, but I felt like I didn't have time for that. I mean, knight b3 hitting the rook and the bishop is a threat, and I don't want to just straight give this dark square bishop for his knight. You know, if something like this happens, this is very bad news for me. Just allowing all sorts of play. So e5, I think, was a nice trend-breaking move. Okay, so let's keep rolling here. Nicola G, tough opponent. I am. All right, let's stick with knight f3 and move two. Pretty flexible. I like playing a Tori against this move order. If he castles, I'll play e3. H6, early h6. Is he going to chase my dark square bishop? We shall see. He is. Okay, knight h5 coming. Mm-hmm. Interesting, interesting. All right, let's play here. So if he castles, I think I might be able to play knight takes g5. It's highly intriguing. So probably he's best off taking this right away. Okay, he's going to play the waiting game. Knight takes g5, he takes, and he's defending. So let's play queen e2. I might castle queenside. I do retain this option, so thinking about it. Okay, e5. Breaks in the center. Okay, let's just castle against that. e4 is not a threat. I don't think he really wants to take and open the file with check. Sometimes this move can weaken this diagonal because he can't put a pawn on e6 anymore. Uh, okay, let's think about this. But not too long. <laughs> mm, C3, maybe? This is still not a threat. I'm thinking maybe go for E4, eventually. Because if I take, I feel like he's going to take here and then take with the knight. I'd rather him take with a pawn back, but I don't think I can guarantee that yet. So C3 seems reasonable. Granted, now he could take, maybe, and it is safer to do that with the queens opposing each other on the file. Okay, he castles. Knight takes, he's going to take with a queen. That doesn't do anything. Uh, thinking about dropping the bishop back. I feel like he might go for f5. e4 still looks pretty reasonable. f5 seems annoying, so I'm going to do this. I'm goading him into playing g4, knight h4, take d4, but I like the look of knight f5. All right, I think I have to take that. Takes it that way. Interesting. Okay, well, let's centralize now. G4, I'll play knight g1. Centralize, maybe play for e5. Hmm. Yeah, let's go e5 right away. Break in the center. I have a better pawn structure now. Uh, queen e4 is possible here. Queen e4, he can play f5, among other things. I can take d6. I like queen e4. Let's make him play f5. This seems like it should be better for me. f5, I can take on b7 if I want. Wow, he's going to play this. This looks scary. But I see his point. There's no immediate win. But okay, check looks very natural. I'm going to take here now. He'll take with his queen. Now, how do I... His, his dark square bishop is key to his defense here. Uh, h4, maybe? h4 or knight e4? play h4. Not quite sure what to do. I mean, his rooks are way out of play. My king looks pretty safe. Just kind of softens up this g5 pawn. I'm threatening to take, take, then knight e4 and win the g5 pawn. This kind of looks like a reverse king's gambit structure. Or no, a not even reverse king's gambit. Like black takes the pawn on f4 and then protects it with g5 in the king's gambit, but I'm not down a pawn. So that, that feels nice. Oh, man. Hmm. Okay, let's play knight c4. He's very exposed on this diagonal now. 
almost feels like there's some sort of direct way to break through here. Okay, now he might have queen g8 as a defensive resource. Rook e7 looks really nice. Rook e7, he still has queen g8, but that seems nice. I'm going to play this move. This might be overambitious, but he's going to be in for a real tough defense here. Queen g8, I can always trade and take c7. At minimum, I'm up upon there. Okay, he's going to go for this. I feel like this should be winning for me. Queen f7, I check. Okay, he's going to defend with bishop to, d to e6 at the end. Hmm. Okay, oh, man, I see his point. Yikes. All right, let's take. Yeah, this went wrong for me. <laughs> Got to scramble now. All right, let's do this. This went very wrong for me. Let's keep the knight on. Uh, let's take. Try to get the knight into e5. It's going to be a time scramble now. Wait, don't pre-move that? Okay. If he takes, I have knight d7 at least. Okay, let's check. Okay, some confusion here. Um, can I take this? Oh, I can't stop. Oh, I can. I have 94. We have 94. That was lucky. That was very lucky. Knight g6 is now a threat. Okay, take. It's going to be hard for him. Let's push this now. Go after his pawns. I'll defend that. Ooh, I got him on the clock. Okay. Messy game. I blew a large chunk of my advantage. I felt like I was close to winning there. Rookie seven. Heroic, but probably wrong. He found a really nice defense there. Let me check that position. Ooh, it looks so juicy and correct to play this. But yeah, after this, I didn't realize that this bishop e6 defense would just hold for him. So my queen is under attack. Oh, I didn't even look at rook takes e6 here, but does that even work? Probably doesn't. I should have look at, looked at rook takes e6 further trying to uh, deflect his pieces. Bishop f5. Seems like he's holding here. Yeah, I don't see a good check with the knights or anything, so... Yeah, that was nice. And if I play queen takes here, then he has rook h8. So this previously poorly placed rook on b8 comes back in the action. And yeah, I didn't like this either. If queen g6, take, take, he takes c4. This didn't seem correct for me. Okay. Cardiac kid over here. All right, let's, let's keep going. Two more games left in the session. Remember, I cap it at five games. That's the number I've decided on for this series. And... Seems to be a good number. Yeah, chaotic game where both players had many chances to win, I'll say. Eight mistakes and a lot of blunders. All right, 2675. Let's um let's play this Tory attack again. I don't think it's as good this way, but it's interesting. Okay, let's just play c3. As good this way in that black hasn't committed the knight to f6 in that variation. Okay, let's play bishop e2. Often they can try for a very quick e5 in this line. Face this a couple times. Uh, okay, let's play rook e1. Mm -hmm. Tempted to play knight c4 here, but that doesn't work. What about bishop c4? That seems interesting. Could take He could take on b2, maybe. Uh, but then I can perhaps take and play d5. Take and d5 is a threat. Interesting. Okay, so he goes there. Yeah, let's drop that back. He's probably going to put his knight here and maybe take my bishop. I guess I'm okay with that. I kind of have to be. <laughs> I'll take with the queen. Yeah, he's got the two bishops, but I feel like this position is pretty reasonable. Let's go here. Some ideas to pressure him, knight f4. Okay, that looks like a good move. I can take and play d5.
Let's try it. I like this. Facing some tough players this session. 2600s. Okay, so the knight has to run away. Let's go to b4. He might chase me with the a pawn. Drop back here. If a4, queen b4, or queen a3, one of the two, probably queen here. I up this pawn, maybe knight e3 or knight a3. Uh, I should be aware of a3 as a threat for black, like destabilizing my pawn chain, but I like that I can take it with the knight, perhaps. Uh, h3, maybe? Mm, let's play... I'm going to play pawn a3 myself. I just don't like the possibility of this. Just fix this pawn. Make sure it remains as a weakness there. Okay, let's play h3. Bishop d6, I'm just going to move my queen. Now we'll go here. Bishop c5, queen d2. Queen b6, probably bishop e3. Okay. Interesting position. I feel like a trade of the dark square bishops is pretty nice for me. Note that he can't take here because he would lose the bishop. And if he takes on e3, I can take with a knight, and my queen is defending b2. On the one hand, it might have been nice to keep the dark square bishops on board because I feel like black's king is pretty open, but I also feel like I need to defend. Okay, let's take. Now do I push d6 or play knight e3? Hmm, tough call, actually. Push d6. I'm going to go with the more active move. So if he takes, takes, and I can try to work my way into the f6 square. Ooh, also, g4 is a threat. I didn't notice that on the previous move. I could have played that. I guess he had e3. Wow, he's going to sack the exchange. Interesting. All right, well... I will for sure take him up on that. Uh, g4, g4, he can drop the bishop all the way back to c8. Let's play here. I want to win this pawn with g4. Have multiple attackers here. This looks like a good multi-purpose move. Hits this pawn as well. Wouldn't be surprised if we played bishop e6 here. Although then I could take there, maybe. Okay, um... I'm just going to take this now. But I do need to play a little bit faster. Okay, let's go here. Also, maybe this in mind. G4, no. Mm. Okay, play a defensive move. Faster, John. Too slow. This is a pretty sturdy defensive move, though, rook e3. Now my queenside pawns are going to be a force. Force to be reckoned with. Let's roll it. I'll play g4. g4 I'm going to take and try to threaten queen d4. Bishop d5, rook d4. He's pinned. Uh, let's go after that bishop. Just make sure he really can't hurt me on the on the light squares. Queen b7, rook d5. I have checks. Okay, I trade the queens. Nice. And that will secure it. Okay. Very game opponent playing for the initiative, but... Yeah, I think I successfully wrested it away from him for a while. Um, it's been a mini theme of this session so far. I was very surprised by his decision to sack the exchange, but given that g4 is a threat, which I didn't notice until after I played knight e3, that may be the correct thing to do. I mean, I, yeah, I could have played it before. I could have played it right here. 
He can take d5 with, again, a time on my queen, but I just dropped this back, and the bishop is trapped. Although my king gets a little open, so... Looks like a fairly clean game, according to the computer. Okay. So one more game. Let's do it. Feeling good. It's Monday, so I hope you guys are having a good start to your week. Bleffer 6-6 six, six is the next opponent, the last one of the day. Okay, let's play a Slav. Okay, I like to play bishop f5 here. It's acceptable because there's not as much pressure on d5 as normal. You do have to be careful about queen b3, though. It is very often an attempt from white. Like, he might play it here. This is, this is theory. Next black usually goes bishop e7. Some pressure on h2. I can't capitalize on it yet, but let's go here. He castles. Okay, let's take. And now I'm going to play b5 next move. If he takes with the bishop. He takes with the queen. Hmm. Interesting. I think I'm justified in playing rook takes h2 here. Knight b5, I can just play queen c7. I think it's okay to play this. Queen takes is not normal. And bishop takes, I was going to play b5, but now b5, knight takes, so don't want to do that. Let's pre-move this capture. So white's down a pawn, but white sometimes has compensation in these positions for that single pawn. Uh, could castle queenside, could play queen c7. I think I like castling queenside. I'm going to do it. I do run into some some situation here, but I think it's fine. Uh, let's play knight b6, hit the queen. Mm -hmm. Now, I would love to trade the dark square bishops if I could. That's He's not going to make that easy, though. Let's hide the king. He's probably going to do the same. No, he's coming with the pawn. Interesting. Okay, fair. All right, let's bring this back. I am leery of your counterplay, sir. Queen b6, queen b6, you might keep the queens on somehow. Um, actually, I think I like it. It's a little bit more active. I'm going to do it. He's not going to trade. Uh, he has a check here, but I guess that wasn't leading to much. Okay, here I was considering e5. Queen b4 also possible. Queen b4. I'm going to play e5. I'm trying to fight back. Hmm. Okay, let's take. Played king c2 very quick. I'm a little surprised by that. This actually seems decent for me now. He might have misplayed that a bit. Can still take there, yeah. Um, Let's take. Take with the rook, maybe? No, it takes with the queen. He seems all right playing an endgame. Okay, let's take. Down on the clock here. Got to play faster. Um, all right, let's just take. Hmm. Mm, I hate to play. Yeah, I hate to play this, but I kind of have to. Bishop c4, knight h6, I guess. Can take and play e6, maybe. That looks a little nasty. But I'm trying to maintain my pawn edge. Or sorry, I'm not even up a pawn here. I don't know why I thought I was up a pawn. All right, well. Still play, but got to play quick here. Drifting into my old ways. Knight f5, he has rook d3, so that's not leading to much. Oh, I am up a pawn here. I am, keep miscounting. Okay, um... Knight f5, I already looked at that. Okay, let's, let's play knight b6.
just simplify. Go knight here. And I still have knight f5. Knight f5 is a nice resource if I get the chance. I'll take this way if he takes. Knight f5 is a threat for sure. It's going to drive away his defense of the e5 pawn. Okay, he's hesitating. He's down on the clock now. Okay, let's check. Hmm. I'm going to be greedy and keep this pawn. He trades. Wow. I was not expecting that. Go after this pawn next. For sure. Ooh, I think I'm going to flag him here. It's a very annoying endgame anyways, because I have the knight and he has the bishop, but um, prime flagging situation. Check. Yeah, it is just too hard to play. Okay. Well, I spent too long in the middle game. You can see again how important that initiative is. Like he was down a pawn, but he found some good moves to pressure me, like pushing the A pawn. I thought he could have improved a little bit right around here, like Queen A4. Maybe queen a2 is better. I like the look of queen a2 for him because then if I ever play e5, f7 is hanging. So that might have made it harder for me to break out. But just looking at the time, let's try to isolate where I spent time and where he spent time. I spent 10 seconds on rook takes h2. Probably should have played that a little bit, a little bit faster. Yeah, I started spending time when I was debating whether to keep defending or go for the attack. 15 seconds on king e5. Yeah, also here pretty late in the game. Knight g8. Knight g8's almost forced. I got to play faster. I think it was debating knight d5 or c5, but probably doesn't matter too much. Got to gotta clean that up. But yeah. And I was miscounting the material for a while. I was up upon here the whole way. I, at a certain point, halfway through, I convinced myself I wasn't. But All right. So... Another good session, five for five. Last one was a uh, just a normal session. I didn't play after a workout. Today I played after a three and a half mile run. And I gotta say on the whole, I even though I've been playing pretty well, I think with both situations, both circumstances, I definitely feel the cognitive boost in playing after a, a quick workout. And also waiting for maybe 20, 30 minutes afterwards to play the session. I don't play it immediately like right when I come inside after the workout wait get some tea get some water set up the recording so something you guys might want to experiment with all right so fun games today strong opponents every game just looking at their ratings yeah i faced uh 2672 in the first one 2374 second one 2651 2667 2609 so yeah good slate of opponents here so thanks for watching guys let me know if you have any feedback, and I'll be back again soon with another video. Bye, guys.